In this session, we're going to talk about pressing. We're going to talk about pressing in um, with bias as well as straight of grain. And when we go to the fabric store, we buy fabric. And it comes on a bolt and it's folded in half from selvage to selvage. When it's selvage to selvage, we call it cross grain. This direction, we call it length of grain. And when we cut anything on an angle, it's bias. And that's where we get into trouble with our, with our pressing often. When we cut for triangles or anything on an angle, these sides, are pretty solid. There's no movement in the fabric. But when we get to the bias, we can take and pull that quite a bit. And when we're handling the fabric, uh, we can stretch it, get it out of, um, you know, out of alignment, wh however you want to say that. So we don't want to do that. So we want to press. I always say this is ironing and this is pressing. And this is how we want to do that. So if I have a block, I'm going to press a half square triangle. The first thing that I want to do is I want to set my thread into my fabric. That little detail is pretty important because that thread stands up off of the material so that when I'm pressing it back, the material has to go over that thread. It may seem like a, a little thing, but it becomes a big thing. So I'm simply going to set my iron for a second or two on top of the fabric and now that thread has been sunk into the fabric, it's no longer sticking up and I can, I can press. In quilting, we often press to the dark side. It's simpler that way when we get to butting up seams and putting and constructing the block as it should be. Again, we don't really want to handle the block very much. We want to handle it the least amount that we can. So I simply gently lay it in my hand back like this because I want to take my iron on the side. If I were to push the iron into those seams, very minute, but enough to, to create havoc when I'm sewing my seams together, I'll have these little divots. So I want to place my iron on my fabric on the side and the iron stops at the seam line and you can practically see it. Once I've hit that seam, I simply set my iron on it for a couple of seconds and I have a beautifully ironed half square triangle. I don't have those bows that can often happen on the sides of my, of my half square triangle. Then there's the question of do I use steam or do I not use steam? My preference is no steam. Um, I'm known for my beginning quilting students and, and bringing them into the fold. And it takes some time to unlearn ironing and to get to the pressing. So I encourage my students to not use steam because the water stretches the material. Of course, many out there love steam and it gets everything nice and firm and flat and it works beautifully. If you're into the pressing, you can keep yourself from pushing that iron. Go ahead and use the steam if, if that works for you. Or have a spray bottle next to your ironing board or ironing mat and spritz your, your block and then again press the iron on the fabric and you will have the accuracy you're looking for with pressing your seams.